Good afternoon. So ready to clap, to start. So first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to this pep talk. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Please sign in your name, your Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Please include names of, the compa of your companions attending. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on, and even after the pep talk. There will be group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk. Please show your face during the picture taking in the video. As a reminder also, please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get the certificate. The link is already in the chat box. I saw it already. Okay. So this is a sample of the certificate that you will be getting once you pass the uh, Olete with a perfect score. Again, as a reminder, obtaining 50 Olete certificates will entitle one to a voucher for a pre ro Hoson telemedical consultation. So let's now have a group picture taking before we start the pep talk proper in two minutes. Please show your face now on your video. Okay, ready? I have a uh, patient empowerment program in which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. There are three courses in the pep talk. I completed the core course on October 9, 2021, last year. From October 23, 2021 onwards, I have been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may take three years or longer, depending on your enthusiasm for the pep talk. My pep talk today is entitled Fundamentals and Generalities in the Medical Management of RLQ or Right Lower Quadrant Abdominal Pain and Appendicitis. This is part of the health disorder course. The empowerment objective is for you, the lay people, to have an understanding of the fundamentals and generalities in the medical management of right lower quadrant abdominal pain and appendicitis. March 19, 2022, I gave this talk on uh, abdominal disorders an overview. Essentially, I focus on the five different types of abdominal disorder, abdominal pain, abdominal mass, obstruction, bleeding, and jaundice. So we have taken up abdominal pain. Today we will be more specific. We will go on, on to the uh, specific location in the abdomen, which is the right lower quadrant. Okay. Then in subsequent lectures, we will be tackling the other disorders like the mass, obstruction, bleeding, and jaundice. So for today, it will be, uh, okay, this was taken up last week, okay, abdominal pain and overview. But for today, we'll be uh, focusing on 
right lower quadrant abdominal pain and appendicitis. The contents will be the following. What is a right lower quadrant abdominal pain? Different types, causes, how common, clinical diagnosis of right lower quadrant abdominal pain, paraclinical diagnostic procedures, basic treatment modalities, and management of appendicitis. Definition of terms in the title and the limitation of coverage of my talk. The word fundamentals in the title will be, will be used to mean simplest and essential facts and theories which can serve as a basis or foundation and su support for future and advanced information. The word generalities in the title will be used to mean general statements of information, not covering specifics and details. And the word and the phrase medical management will mean the diagnosis and treatment being usually being done by physicians. So what is right lower quadrant abdominal pain? Right lower quadrant stands for or RLQ stands for right lower quadrant. And right lower quadrant abdominal pain means the pain or the unpleasant sensation in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. So the right lower quadrant is the location of the pain. So what is the implication of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain? <clears throat> All tissues, Organs in the right lower quadrant area could be the source of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain. And these uh, components of the belly, of the belly of the, abdo of, of the abdomen in this area will be the following. Abdominal wall, peritoneal lining, internal abdominal organs in the area. <clears throat> What are the diff different types of right lower quadrant abdominal pain? So essentially the different types, when we define the different types, it will be those based on the origin of the pain or the unpleasant sensation in that area, right lower quadrant. So as you can see from this uh, picture, the abdominal wall could be a source, okay? And then the lining of the cavity which is called peritoneum. This can, can be another source of the pain, right lower quadrant pain. The solid organs in this area, okay, and the hollow organs, okay. So here are shown the hollow organs, the large intestine and small intestines. The solid organs will be the uterus and the ovaries here down below here. <clears throat> so. My classification, my suggestion on the general classification of types of unpleasant sensation that can be used as a cue as to uh, the source of the uh, right lower quadrant pain. This is the same thing that we use for the whole abdomen. So if the pain is constant and superficial, suspect abdominal wall. The pain is coming from the abdominal wall. If the if the pain is constant and but deeper than than the, that than uh, be, being superficial, then we think of the peritoneal lining causing the pain. And then for solid organ, you have to press deeper. And that if you have pain there, constant, most likely it's a solid organ pain. And then if the pain is crumpy or colicky in that area, you think of the hollow organs. Okay. So these are the cues that I usually use, but it's, it's not uh, foolproof, but at least you can try this. The next uh, topic will be what are the causes of the right lower quadrant pain? As I said, all tissues, organs in the right lower quadrant area could be the source of the abdominal, right lower quadrant abdominal pain. The retonal wall, but peritoneal lining, internal organs in the area, both hollow and solid organs, so such as the appendix, the right colon, okay, the so-called ascending colon here, 
or the cecum here, and then the small intestines, the right ureter, which is hidden here at the back, the, the urinary bladder, still within the right lower quadrant, and then the female reproductive organs, like the right ovary, right fallopian tubes, and part of the uterus. So here, right lower quadrant A, okay. So you can see uh, hollow organs here, the yep. small intestine in this area, large intestine, appendix, okay. The uterus, the bladder here. Fallopian okay. tubes on the right side and the ovary. All kinds of medical conditions and diseases in these organs that I mentioned can cause the abdominal pain. So the general kinds of uh, medical conditions and diseases are classified into four, inflammation, tumors, stones, hormonal changes. These are the four common con uh, medical conditions that will affect the organs in this particular area. There could be more. Clinical diagnosis of right lower quadrant abdominal pain. So the uh, processes used in the clinical diagnosis of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain will be the following, pattern recognition process and prevalence process. Pattern recognition process just means the uh, realization that a patient's presentation conforms to a previously learned picture or pattern of a disease. Whereas the prevalence process means the choice of a diagnosis is based on the frequency, how frequent, how common, of the occurrence of the disease in a certain locality, in a certain age group and sex group, and in the affected organ and systems. So some tips on the uh, clinical diagnosis of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain. The basic evaluation methods that we have to use will be history taking, meaning you try to get the symptoms, those felt by a patient, by a particular person, and then physical examination okay, to get the signs. Okay. Then after getting the signs and the symptoms data, we process this to come out with the, the so-called clinical diagnosis. So tips in uh, this is a symptom-based evaluation. Later on, we will talk about the sign base. Based on the symptoms, you try to get uh, cues for the possible cause of the uh, right lower quadrant pain. So first, try to determine the type of pain as best as you can. As we have discussed last time, it's not so easy, okay? But uh, earlier, in the, in the other slides, I told you if it's constant, dull, and uh, superficial, most likely it's uh, coming from the abdominal wall. If it's colicky and crampy, most likely it's coming from the hollow organs. Then the second step is to try to feel for any associated symptoms like fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, because the associated symptoms will also give some clue as to the specific cause of the the uh, right lower quadrant abdominal pain. And then ask the patient to recall any antecedent or precipitating events that may lead to the pain. And then monitor closely the pain. So the course and its associated symptoms, this is the so-called watchful waiting monitoring. So a lot of times this can give us a true picture of the type of pain and the cause of the pain. So try to determine the type of pain as best as you can. As I said, it's not easy, but a simple classification that may have diagnostic importance will be the following. Okay. If it's crampy, colicky, you think of a hollow organ involvement. If it's not crampy, then it may be from any source. Even the hollow organ can be involved, but because uh, in the early stage of the pain of a hollow organ uh, involvement, the pain may not be uh, colicky, uh, it, it may not be as clear cut as, as uh, may be uh, possible, okay? So it will just present as any dull pain okay, in the early stage. 
then feel for any associated symptoms. Okay. Example, if you have fever, an, an inflammation or infection may be going on. So that's a cue. Okay. Vomiting, possible obstruction. If the patient has diarrhea also, then possible enteritis or infection. Urinary disturbance, possible bladder problem. And then recall any antecedent precipitating event. Example will be if there's a history of recent vehicular accident, okay, possible blunt injury on the right lower quadrant, okay, history of men's possible dysmenorrhea in that area. Okay. Monitor closely the pain, as I said, the force and its associated symptoms, because sometimes or over time, the type of pain may be clearer in character to enable for you to make a pattern recognition of the medical condition or disease. And also over time, the appearance of associated symptoms may also enable you to do the pattern recognition. So for the sign base, okay, meaning doing the physical examination, so the, uh, the basic technique will be to look and to palpate. So this is not the same as symptom-based. Symptom-based is what a person feels. <clears throat> so basic examinations of the abdomen in terms of looking and palpating. So look for any unusual bulbs, particularly in the right lower quadrant that may suggest a mass. Okay. Look for abdominal distension that may suggest intestinal obstruction or a mass. Palpate for possible presence of a mass, and then palpate for the presence of, the, of tenderness, which is pain on pressure. And if present, you have to evaluate further. Okay, but this is a cue, important cue already, but you have to evaluate it further to check what is the real cause of the tenderness. <clears throat> so in looking for the specific cause of the right lower quadrant pain, abdominal pain, as I said, use pattern recognition of a particular medical condition or disease and prevalence process in those with similar presentation of symptoms and signs. Because there's, there might be uh, two diseases or medical conditions that might present with the same signs and symptoms, then you use the prevalence to choose which one is most likely the clinical diagnosis. So using these two processes, you come out with primary and secondary. <clears throat> most probable diagnosis is the primary, second most probable is the primary, most, second most probable is the secondary diagnosis. There's no such thing as 100% sure diagnosis all the time. So you may have to come out with a decision which one is most probable, which one is second most probable. So examples of general statements on clinical diagnosis would be the following. So a patient presents with right lower quadrant pain after doing the uh, history and physical examination and then using pattern recognition and prevalence process, you can come out a physician or you can come out with such statement. You can say primary diagnosis is non-specific cause in which you cannot really identify a particular disease and the secondary diagnosis is a specific disease, but you just have to specify disease. Or it can be the other way around. Primary diagnosis can be the specific cause, and then secondary diagnosis will be a non-specific cause. So if there are cues or clues for a specific disorder or a disease, such as a mass or obstruction, then specify the disorder. Okay. So once you have a mass, you have abdominal mass as a disorder. If you have obstruction, okay, then you have abdominal obstruction as the first diagnosis. And then, but you st don't stop there. You go further and try to look for the specific cause. So what is the mass? What is causing the mass? What is the, uh, the, the more specific cause for the mass? What is the more specific cause for the obstruction? If there are cues for a uh, okay, the specific disease, then specify the specific disease. Okay? Then that, in the end, that will be the diagnosis. Okay? 
But let's talk about the so-called non-specific right lower quadrant pain. This is a possible diagnosis. It's present, okay? It can happen a lot of times okay, in which you cannot really specify the specific diagnosis. And in due time, it can disappear by itself, okay? So, <clears throat> so this is the general rule of, of Q. In patients with right lower quadrant abdominal pain, but without clear cut cues or signs or clues for abdominal mass, abdominal obstructions, okay? Because if you have abdominal mass, abdominal obstruction, you don't consider the non-specific anymore. It's quite specific, okay? But in the absence of cues for abdominal mass obstruction, and it has to be end, the abdominal pain is mild, okay? Mild and with no clear-cut characteristics. And again, no cues for a specific dis disease, okay? So this one is disorder. This one is the, the uh, particular disease. So no cues for disorder. The pain is mild. No cues for specific disease. The diagnosis is usually non-specific right lower quadrant abdominal pain. Okay. So if you made such a diagnosis, or if I made such a diagnosis, I have to monitor you closely so that to check whether it's really non-specific that will the pain will just disappear in due time, or it may turn out that it is just the beginning of a more specific disease. So it has to be monitored closely afterwards. <clears throat> so why, uh, okay, the reason for making such a diagnosis, non-specific, is that the early stage of the medical condition or the disease or a mild, just a mild medical condition in the sources of pain produces no distinct character or nature. So that's why it's hard to determine whether there is a specific disease or not, okay? So a lot of times the patient will just feel some feelings of discomfort, okay? So you cannot really identify the, the disease itself. So most of the time it, it will turn out to be a non-specific right lower quadrant pain. <coughs> in such cases, at times, or most of the time, watchful waiting may allow more distinct character or nature of the unpleasant feeling to show up. Let it evolve, let it come out, okay? So if, if there are more, more cues, then you will be able to do a more specific diagnosis. <clears throat> Some abdominal conditions or diseases have typical courses. Some have chronic and recurrent track records, such as dysmenorrhea, usually recurrent, and colonic diverticulitis. Okay. So others have just one bout, or, and then it rarely recurs. And then others have progress, progressive uh, course, it, but this progressive post, uh, course will connote serious diagnosis. <clears throat> so the onset and the course of pain can, be also, can, also be, uh, can also assist in the clinical diagnosis. So these are some of the classification of the course. If it's acute or recent, when you say acute or recent, it's about one week or two, okay? If it's chronic, it's usually something that lasts for about <clears throat> three months. If it's recurrent, we usually consider, we usually uh, <clears throat> use this as a basis, three episodes within three months, okay? Then we call it recurrent, okay? And then progressive meanings, it's increasing in intensity. So if it's increasing intensity, that's a cause for concern. Again, <clears throat> some abdominal conditions and diseases have typical severity score. Some are usually mild, some are usually uh, moderate, some from the very start usually present with a severe pain. So example, pain caused by ureteral stones, meaning stones uh, in the, uh, in the uh, passageway from the kidney to the bladder will cause a very, very severe pain. So this could be a cue that you're dealing with a urinary, ureteral stones. So the severe pain can be classified 
classified as mild, moderate, and severe. And the pain, aside from implying the urgency, okay, in the immediate, immediate uh, in the uh, in the medical treatment, meaning it has to be done as soon as possible, it also has a connotation in the diagnosis and subsequent treatment. So I will now introduce to you the concept of acute abdomen. Sometimes the specific cause of the acute abdomen cannot be definitely established. When you say acute abdomen, it is a condition usually with severe okay, abdominal pain. Okay. So when you have acute abdomen, it's usually the pain is severe. Okay. If it's mild, you don't actually consider acute abdomen, okay, severe abdominal pain. And the condition here, because of its severity, of, of its severity in the abdomen of the pain, it demands urgent, immediate attention and treatment. So in such a case, if you can establish the specific diagnosis, it is enough to decide whether it's, it is a surgical abdomen or non-surgical abdomen. Okay. This is a special category of the clinical diagnosis of the abdominal pain. And this is usually done by a physician. So when you say acute surgical versus acute non-surgical, the pain is severe. But in acute surgical, it has to be operated right away. Okay, the abdomen has to be operated on right away. If you say it's a non-surgical, there is severe pain, but the, the physician make a diagnosis. No, it's not, it's not surgical abdomen. It's a, a non-surgical. Then you don't have to operate. Okay? So you just give medicine to, re to relieve the pain. Paraclinical diagnostic procedures for right lower quadrant abdominal pain. <clears throat> Common instrumental and laboratory diagnostic procedures for right lower quadrant abdominal pain will be the following. Imaging procedures like x-ray, which could be plain or with contrast, ultrasound, CT scan, MRI, PET scan, etc. Another major or common instrumental laboratory diagnostic procedure will be endoscopy. Upper example will be esophagus and stomach. So esophageal gastroscopy. For the lower part of the intestine, you have colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, and proctoscopy. Then the other common laboratory diagnostic tests are the blood tests, CBC, complete blood count, liver function test, tumor markers, etc. The uh, foremost indication for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure can be stated this way. If you're not certain on the primary clinical diagnosis and you need to be more certain or certain or more, be more certain before treatment, then go for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure. And to decide on the uh, indication for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure, the physician uses two processes. One, is the degree of certainty on the primary clinical diagnosis and then comparison of the treatment plans for the primary and secondary clinical diagnosis. So it is assumed that all diagnoses will have to have two, primary and secondary all the time because there's no such thing as one and only diagnosis. There's no such thing as 100% sure diagnosis, clinical diagnosis. Okay. As a rule, there is no need for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure if you are quite certain of your primary clinical diagnosis and the treatment plans for the primary and secondary diagnosis are the same. Even though you have different secondary diagnosis, but the treatment plans for, the both, for both of them will be the same, then you don't need to do a paraclinical diagnostic procedure. Competencies required of physicians managing right lower quadrant pain or, or any abdominal pain for that matter. So the physician must know the uses and indications of all known instrumental and laboratory diagnostic procedure for abdominal pain so that he will be knowledgeable in how to make a, a selection. 
and then we must use them as needed and as indicated only. And then he has to use, they have to use the uh, BRCA process to select the most cost-effective one. And then they must also know how to interpret the results of the diagnostic procedures. So the BRCA process in selecting diagnostic procedure will be uh, illustrated here. On the first column, you list down the options for the paraclinical diagnostic procedure. Then on the second column, you list down the, the data on the uh, benefit. When you say benefit, because you're doing a test, diagnostic test, you want to be more definite on the clinical diagnosis. You want to be more definite on the primary okay, diagnosis. Okay, that's the first priority. Okay, so you list down, let's say this one is 90% uh, benefit, this one 80, 60. So option one with the 90% will be the best, will have the best benefit. Then the risk, what will be the uh, side effect, what will be the inconvenience entailed, and then the cost of the uh, various options, and then whether they are available in the community, in your hospital, or whether they are readily available. They may be available, but some are not readily available. So you use the data to choose which one will be the best paraclinical diagnostic procedure for a particular patient. Now, let me go back to this acute abdomen thing. Okay, as I said, it could be acute surgical, acute non-surgical. <clears throat> So in patients with acute surgical abdomen, <clears throat> if the uh, doctor says the patient has acute surgical abdomen, she says he will mean that the patient has a severe abdominal pain, okay? but the specific cause of the uh, severe abdominal pain inside the abdomen cannot be definite stuff, but for sure it will be something that has to be operated on. Okay? So he made the decision that the patient has acute surgical abdomen. So in such a case, the caveat is here. No time should be wasted on paraclinical diagnostic procedures just to establish the definite cause, okay? So don't waste your time trying to get this to, uh, this to, the, to establish the specific cause of the surgical abdomen, okay? The surgeon should operate without establishing the specific cause because time is of the essence a lot of times, okay, times of the essence that the, the patient needs operation as soon as possible. Okay. And the operation can serve both as a therapeutic as well as a diagnostic procedure. Okay. So once you operate, you will know, you open up the abdomen, you will know what's the real cause. Okay. Basic treatment modalities of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain. Okay. So the basic modalities of treatment will be classified into three, surgical, non-surgical, potentially surgical. When you say surgical, it's an outright surgical, meaning outright operation is needed. Non-surgical, no operation is needed, no matter what. Okay. Potentially surgical, initially it can be a no operation, observation, and then only operate when needed, when there are symptoms or undue uh, development on the condition. Okay, so so the way to do it, just list down the, the particular diseases causing the right lower quadrant pain, and then just put there what is the usual treatment for disease W? Is it surgical? For X, is it potentially surgical? Y, non-surgical, etc. So examples of outright surgical abdomen, meaning the right lower quadrant pain is caused by a condition that needs to be operated right away. Okay. So as I said, if the uh, physician decides that it's a surgical abdomen, the patient needs operation no matter what, you know, no matter what the specific disease is, then it's an example of acute surgical abdomen as uh, a condition calling for outright operation. If there is complete intestinal obstruction, because if you don't operate on this, it, the intestine will just will rupture, okay, causing more problem. 
peritonitis, example, will be secondary to ruptured appendicitis. Okay. It is already ruptured, so it's causing infection inside the abdomen. So the, the patient has to be operated on right away. Resectable tumors okay, is another example of a condition that is considered as needing outright surgical abdomen. Okay. The uh, surgical treatment uh, procedures that are usually done for the right lower quadrant pain produced by some specific diseases will be the following. Drainage, if there is an abscess, let's say appendicial abscess, abscess on the ovary, then it has to be drained. Okay. Removal, the medical term uh, suffix here is ectomy, such as cholecystectomy, ectomy. Cholecyst, cholecyst is gallbladder, gallbladder removal. Okay. Another type of surgical treatment that is usually being done is repair. Okay. Repair means uh, the, uh, the medical suffix here or term here is rapi, rapi such as gastrotherapy, okay, or in this right lower quadrant pain, you can have a enterotherapy if there is a laceration of the small intestine in the right lower quadrant, then you call that enterotherapy, enterotherapy. Examples of potentially surgical abdomen, meaning it's a, it could be surgical when indicated, when needed. Okay. So asymptomatic urinary bladder polyps. So at that time, most likely it's not causing any problem. It, it's benign, okay? So it's being observed. And then let's say sometimes the polyp grow bigger and expected that there is now a suspicion that there, that there could be a cancer, then the patient has to be operated on. Another example of potentially surgical abdomen, diverticulitis. Usually we just observe, we don't operate on this left and right. Okay. And then if it causes some problem, then we operate. Incomplete intestinal obstruction. Okay. So there could be some instances that uh, you don't operate right away. Okay. You just observe until uh, there's a need to do the operations already, such as when there is a development of almost complete obstruction. Okay. Asymptomatic benign tumors, benign tumors not causing any problem. So you can leave it for a while, then observe. Okay. So if there is a uh, undue development, like increasing in size, then it becomes now a surgical abdomen. For the outright uh, non surgical abdomen, examples will be, of course, urinary tract infection. You don't operate on this primary dysmenorrhea, uncomplicated salpingitis, so infection of the uh, allopian tube, okay. Enterocolitis, meaning infection of the small and large intestine. So in such cases, usually the treatment is outright non-surgical. So no operations needed. So when, when you talk of non-surgical treatment, this usually include medicine most of the time. But there are instances in which no medicine is also indicated. Okay, we just do watchful waiting and give natural support management, etc. So, in trying to choose the various treatment modalities for a particular patient, again we use the BRCA process, okay. choosing the uh, the most cost-effective treatment modalities here because BRCA for treatment selection of treatment, the benefit is different from the, from the diagnostic procedure. For the diagnostic procedure, the benefit is that which one has a better chance of giving you a more information for the diagnosis. But for the treatment, what will be a better chance of uh, achieving the goal of treatment? For example, I, option one will have lower chance of recurrence after treatment. Option two will have a higher chance of recurrence. Then the better option will be one that is lower chance of recurrence. Okay. Management of appendicitis. I just choose uh, appendicitis as an example for this particular lecture. Okay, as we know, there are a lot of different organs in the right lower quadrant area that can cause a lot of. Uh, a cause different conditions. I just choose acute appendicitis because it's the most common medical disease that all lay people should be aware of. 
Okay, recognize and then know what to do and be knowledgeable on how physicians manage it. Okay. This will be part of our patient empowerment program. So in all patients with right lower quadrant abdominal pain without history of appendix removal or operation, usually when you have an appendix, your appendix is, has already been removed, then you don't consider appendicitis anymore, usually, usually, okay. So in all, I repeat, in all patients with right lower quadrant abdominal pain with no history of appendix being removed, appendicitis is always a possibility and should be considered in the evaluation. So why this is so? Because appendicitis is a common surgical condition on the right lower quadrant, okay? But take note, despite the rule that I mentioned, always consider acute appendicitis as a possibility. You have to note that uh, not all right lower quadrant abdominal pains are due to appendicitis. So what you say, ah, may right lower quadrant abdominal pain, so grado appendicitis na yan. No, okay? So you just have to consider the possibility of acute appendicitis, okay? And then for you to be able to make a definite diagnosis, you have to evaluate further, okay? Palpations, okay? Observations. So these are the things that you have to do to make sure that you're dealing with acute appendicitis. So acute appendicitis is an inflamed appendix. Okay, this is the cecum. This is the appendix. The, uh, the usual cause is a, there's a blockade. Okay, there's a block in the blind. The appendix is blind, it's a blind structure, tubular structure. So if there's a block there, okay, usually caused by inflammation of the lining here, some infection, or by the stones, okay, or a, or a hardened feces serving as a stone. So once you have this obstruction, the bacteria will just multiply rapidly and then causing the appendix to become inflamed, swollen, and become filled with pus, okay? So this has to be removed right away. So if not treated promptly, the inflamed appendix will just rupture. So how do you make a clinical diagnosis of acute appendicitis? As I said, not all right lower quadrant abdominal pain is acute appendicitis, but you have to make sure it is not. So you have to evaluate further. So these are the most important cues for the uh, acute diagnosis of acute appendicitis. So if there is a pain there in that area, and then it's definite, Definite means it's not, hindi siya nawawala, palagi andyan, okay? Siguradong meron, and then persistent, tuloy-tuloy, okay? Tuloy-tuloy, ibig sabihin, siguradong meron in that area, in that area. And then progressive, okay? Mas nagiging matindi, okay? Progressive pain. And tenderness, when you say pain, is the feeling of uh, masakit, pero tenderness, oh, dinidiin, masakit. If you press on it, masakit, okay? So it must have progressive pain and tenderness on the right lower quadrant. And then you have to make sure that there, there are no other symptoms like urinary and bowel disturbance and obstetrical gynecologic conditions in the female, especially in the female patients, no? Okay. So in the presence of other organs, in the right lower quadrant, okay? The presence, the, the presence of symptoms in the other organs in the right lower quadrant. Because in the right lower quadrant, you can have your urinary bladder, okay? So if there is urinary disturbance, and then you have pain on the right lower quadrant, you don't consider, you have to think twice, okay? Before making a diagnosis of acute appendicitis. Baka urinary tract infection lang siya. Baka hindi siya acute appendicitis, okay? And then if there is some dysmenorrhea or vaginal discharge, no, baka meron siyang problema sa fallopian tube or sa uterus, okay? And then, uh, so if there are no such symptoms, no, 
Okay, no vaginal discharge, no, no urinary disturbance, no diarrhea, okay? No diarrhea per se, okay? Then in the presence of this definite, persistent, progressive pain and tenderness, which can only be obtained by close observation, okay? Then you think of acute appendicitis, okay? So that's, the, that's how we diagnose acute appendicitis. The paraclinical diagnostic procedures for acute appendicitis are the following. Okay. One is close monitoring of the right lower quadrant and tenderness and other associated symptoms, the so-called clinical monitoring, ultrasound, and CT scan. Nowadays, a lot of uh, doctors or hospital that you will go into the emergency room they will practice this too right away, and most of the time, CT scan. Okay. But this still plays an important role. You can observe, okay, and you can come out with a diagnosis of acute appendicitis even without the CT scan or ultrasound. Okay. So the most cost effective in the, di in the uh, diagnosis of, of uh, acute appendicitis is still close monitoring, close monitoring. Operations, treatment, okay, or treatment options for acute appendicitis. You have the operation to remove the appendix, okay, remove the entire one, and antibiotics. So these are the two options that are currently available at the moment. The most cost effective is an operation. Because with an operation, you're sure you have removed it. So 1% chance there will be a problem. 99% there will be no problem. Antibiotics, you don't know whether it's going to help or not. You just have to wait. Okay. So the, uh, the uh, cure rate for antibiotics is not as high as 99%. It's below that. Okay. So summary and takeaway, I have discussed the uh, following topics in the right lower quadrant, abdominal pain and acute appendicitis. So takeaway in relation to the patient empowerment, be always in touch with reliable medical information on fundamentals and generalities in medical management of right lower quadrant abdominal pain and appendicitis. Knowledge is power, it gives power. Use the four keys of patient empowerment, kaalaman, kakayanan, karapatan, and kapangyarihan to gain greater control over decisions in the medical management of right lower quadrant abdominal pain and appendicitis. So with that, I end my pep talk. I hope I have empowered you to have a better understanding of the fundamentals and generalities in the medical management of right lower quadrant abdominal pain and appendicitis. Before we go to the open forum, reminder, Please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise or OLETE for mastery of learning and have the perfect score to get the certificate. The link is already in the chat box. 50 OLETE certificates will entitle one to one voucher for RO Hoson telemedical consultation. Let's now have a picture taking before we start the QA and interactions. Okay, ready? Everybody ready? One, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, let's 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 have another one. Mailing oil, kung kamo, wala. Okay, one completo lang yan. Wait na. Okay, one, two, three. Okay.
Okay, the floor is now open for questions, comments, reactions, okay? Even consultation, as I mentioned in my uh, notice the other day, okay? You can, we can have three minute consultation. Hanggang <laughs> three minutes lang. <laughs> So any problems that you may have, but are related to this topic, huh? related to this topic. Okay. So hopefully we can uh, have more people, attract more people to attend <laughs> okay, with free consultation. Any questions? How many, how many have been operated for acute appendicitis already? Na, swerte niyo ah. Okay, si baby. Baby spiritual. Wala na. Yung iba, wala na. Okay. So would you like, uh, baby, would you like to uh, share with us your experience? Kailan ka ba na-operaan? Bata ka pa? Unmute. Unmute. Eh, yung sound now. Ah. 1986. Ha? 1986, Doc. Ilang taon ka na noon? 1986. Ano ko ang 81? Mga 25. Saan nagsimula yung sakit mo? Doc, sa ano? Sa likod, pababa, tapos nagka-cramps yung right, right legs ko. Right, right leg. Okay. Hindi sa right, hindi sa right lower quadrant? Sa right po. Tapos maakit sa taas. Tapos hindi ako magpakali, Dok, kasi uh, parang natatae, naiihi. Ganun pakiramdam ko. Okay. Tapos chineka po ako nila, Dr. Salonga. Yun, sabi nila baka appendicitis. Dinala ako sa ER. Okay. And then? Uh, yun, inoperahan niyo na ako. And then? Ano nabawas? Baka hindi acute appendicitis. Madi daw, Dok. Ah, hindi naman acute, kaya lang nag-start na. Okay. Pero may ano, na-operahan niyo ako. Ha? Ako? Na-operahan niyo ako. Ako nag-opera? Yes, Dok. Ano yung, yung diagnosis mo? Anong histopat? <clears throat> ano, hindi ko na matandaan, Dok, eh. <laughs> Tagal. <clears throat> Pati yung sa breast ko, kayo din na... Uh... Oh, Ang gagawag yung breast. Out of it. Ah. <laughs> Mocos tayo sa, ano, sa right. Ang usually yung sakit, usually sa right lower quadrant. Oh, Doc. Uh -huh. So, doon nagsimula? Doon. Uh -huh. Doon. Ah. Oh. Papo, Doc. Oh, kasi kanina kapag kwento mo, kasi sabi mo sa likod. Eh. Di ba? So, Hindi, Doc. Uh, Maabot din sa likod. Yeah, yeah. Pero yung pinakauna... Doon sa baba. Yung pinaka-sentro doon sa uh, right. right lower. Di ba? Okay. okay. So, yan ang starting point for suspecting acute appendicitis. Okay? Uh -huh. So, and then, umisan, tumat, uh, I mean, nagre-refer o pumupunta sa likod. Okay? Uh -huh. Tumisan sa gitna. Tumisan uh -huh. sa baba. Sa baba. Oh, sa baba. Huh? Nagkaman, hindi pa ako, Doc. Yeah, pwede din, gano'n, no? Okay. So, and then, titignan din mo kung meron kang, meron ka bang uh, problems sa uh, sa pag-ihi during that time? Wala, Dok. Nagtata Pero, hindi ako, nai-stress ako, hindi ako mapakali. Ang pakiramdam ko, matatae, maiihi. Lagi ako sa CR. Nung araw na yun. Baka, natatakot ka lang, baka nervyoso ka lang. No. Okay. <laughs> Dininerve ka nun, Dok. Okay. Uh -huh. so, anong, anong ginawa ko? Diniin ko? Diniin ko? Kinapa ko? Diniin ko, tapos, ayun, nag-prepare ng operation. And then, and then, kwento mo lang kung ano, kasi I want you to apply what we learned today. Ang ginawa ko, dini, diniin ko? Oh, Dok. Okay. Chinect niyo ko, and then, inano niyo yung pako, yung batawag dito, ginanon. <laughs> okay. So, sinabi ko. Anong ER, sinecheck nun do kay. Okay. Anong uh -huh. sinabi ko sa iyo? Hindi siya 100% acute appendicitis, but most likely it is. It was. Okay? Apo. Nag-CT scan ba tayo? Wala, Dok. 
Okay? Nag-ultrasound sa, sa tagal. nag tayo, hindi. Hindi, basta nakapa, nakapa, na ano na eh, nakapa na na appendicitis. Okay. So, uh, nakita mo yung appendix na tinanggal siya? Nakita ko, Dok. Parang medyo maga. Maga. May pato? Uh, eh, may, uh, may buto? May, may tae? May ano? Wala. Yeah, may konting parang buto-buto lang. Okay. Okay, uh, so... So that's an illustration, case illustration, actual, no, of a uh, patient's a baby having acute appendicitis before. So nagkumpisa sa right lower quadrant, no, and then, uh, so I made sure na wala yung other symptoms like urinary tract infection, urinary disturbance, bowel disturbance, and also the uh, bubaisya. probably yung uh, gynae problems niya, wala. Before I uh, before I zero in on the acute appendicitis. No? And then I suppose uh, in-examine kita ng twice, at least twice or thrice. Di ba? Okay. So when you say I examine you twice or thrice, that means minomonitor ko. Okay. Because minomonitor ko to make sure that there is definite. Yun talagang meron. Kasi kami saan pakiramdam isang pasyente, may masakit, pero after a few moments, nawawala. Di ba? Okay. Pagkapa mo sa dyan, ay wala naman. Di ba? Okay. So you have to, the doctor will have to keep on repeating the palpation. Kakapakapain niya. Okay. Regularly. Every hour, every two hours, you know, depende. No? Okay. Kung talagang meron, okay. Kung, uh, uh, as I said, Yung, kung uh, ang sakit is deeper than the skin, no? so you think of the uh, yung peritoneum ang sumasakit na. Kasi ang sumasakit sa appendicitis, pag naka-affected na yung peritoneum, no? okay? hindi yung appendix mismo ang masakit. No? Okay? It's the peritoneum pag may inflammation na. So pinapa ko, and then I think, uh, I, I'm trying to recall, ha? just correct me para... Para... Tingnan mo. Paano, Dok? Diniin nyo, masakit. Diniin ka, masakit na. Okay? Katatandaan mo. Okay? So, and then, ilang ilang, or, ilang oras bago ko nag-decide na opera ka? Katatandaan sa mo. Hindi na ko, hindi ko na maano, Dok, eh. Kasi yung overnight na yun sa bahay, sumasakit na siya, eh. Okay, pero in-examine kita at least twice. At least twice. Uh -huh. okay. So that, okay, I make sure that I examine the patient at least twice to make sure that it's definite, there's persistent. Okay, okay lang yung hindi progressive. Minimum yung persistent sa ka definite. No? Persistent and definite. No? Okay, I, I don't have to wait for the progressive. Pero kung may progressive pain habang di ka pa nagpapatingin sa isang doctor, that's a very reliable cue for acute appendicitis. No? Okay. Okay, so ngayon, the other lesson here is, uh, as I said, okay, 1986, pero by that time, marami na rin gumagawa ng CT scan. No? Okay, so ngayon, very rampant yung CT scan. Sa isang kibot lang, no? masakit ang right lower quadrant pain mo, yung sa, sa baba, isi pag pumasok ka ng ER, isi CT scan ka na. No? So take note of that. Na pwedeng, pwedeng i-observe lang. No? Okay. Just like uh, just like uh, I think the other uh, two, three months ago, nag-teleconsult sa akin, ganun din, right lower quadrant pain, in observed ko lang, after two days, nawala na. No? So non-specific right lower quadrant pain that I don't have to operate. No? Okay. Okay. Okay, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Any question in the chat box? Mer meron, Doc. Sige, ano, sure. Uh, from Mary Melingo, Doc, what will happen if appendix rupture? Will it affect the other organs? Thanks, Doc. When the appendix rupture, okay, so yung nana, yung content dun sa appendix sa loob, nalabas sa cavity, dun sa surrounding, na? Okay. So, pag lumabas na yon, kakalat yung infection. 
Okay, so that what is what that, that's what is meant by affecting other organs. Not really the other organs, but your peritoneum. Okay, yung cavity mismo. Okay, so pag tinamaan yung peritoneal cavity, may infection na yung uh, kakalat ni infection through the bloodstream. No, okay, but it will not. Hindi niya, hindi, hindi, hindi niya i-infect yung, uh, yung uterus. Hindi niya i-infect yung, in, yung large intestine. Mga katabi, yung katabi yung mga organs. May konting stain. May konting kasi nana. No? Malalagyan ng nana doon sa, sa mga adjacent organs like the ovary, like yung sa bubae, ovary, and then yung uh, uterus, yung bladder, may konting stain. No? Kung saan dikit-dikit yung mga nana doon. Okay. Pero it, 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 it will not cause any harm and, and, unless, uh, basta tanggalin mo lang yung appendix. So pag, tina, pag, tina, pag may ruptured appendicitis, usually tinatanggal namin yung appendix, no? yung may butas sa appendix, then yung mga nana yung sa, sa paligid, konting linis lang, hindi mo malilinis lahat yun eh. No? Kasi sumabog na eh. No? Okay? So, yung mga nakadikit sa mga uterus, adjacent organs, no? we just leave them alone in due time. Kasi hindi man yan ang pinaka-main problem. Ang main problem is appendix, no? nag-rupture. At, at natanggal mo na, no? na-control mo na. No? So, in due time, it will just be, uh, yung, yung mga stain, yung mga nakadikit sa other organs will just disappear. Okay? So, ang pinaka-serious uh, part of the uh, situation is pag pumatok, Magkakaroon ka ng peritonitis, na, yung, uh, yung mga infection ng lining, and then pag meron kang uh, peritonitis, it might spread to other, sa, sa bloodstream na, sa bloodstream, yung itiyatawag na sepsis na, na. Okay? Okay? Next question. Another question, Doc, from Mel Cabrera. Nakikita po ba, Doc, sa blood test if may acute appendicitis? First, say, hindi. I mean, when you say blood test, when you say it's acute appendicitis, it will it test that will say acute appendicitis, hindi. Na? Ang mga blood test na ginagawa ngayon, ang pinaka-common is CBC, na? complete blood count. Okay? So, ang makikita lang sa... Pag yung pasyente may acute appendicitis, tap, kasi may, when you say acute appendicitis, may infection doon sa appendix. So once you have infection, ma, yung, uh, yung tinatawag na WBC sa so CBC, may RBC, may WBC yun, di ba? Yung WBC, tataas. Na? Okay? Tataas. Na? Okay? So that could be a, that could be a clue that will... Uh, signify you may have acute, you, you have infection in the body, na? okay? Basta mataas ang WBC mo, that's the first cue that you might have infection inside your body, na? But, hindi niya mapipinpoint kung appendix talaga yun, kung galing sa appendix, na? Okay? So, masasabi mo lang, galing sa appendix kung may kasamang kapat. Kung may kasamang kapat, pag tinapa mo, masakit talaga doon sa right lower quadrant pain mo, right lower quadrant mo, at definite tender, may acute appendicitis. At pag nag-CBC ka at mataas, most likely yung mataas ng WBC is due to the appendix. Na? So, actually, strictly speaking, ako ay personally, ako, personally ha, ako, I don't rely on the CBC. Pero sa hospital, lahat, di kaho niyan, na CBC. Okay? Kasi kung may acute appendicitis ka, kadalasan, normal din yung ano mo, WBC mo. Okay? So pag normal, hindi mo, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, ay, walang acute appendicitis. Basta kung may tenderness, masakit, na, kung kahit na normal yung WBC mo, acute appendicitis pa rin yun. Na? Okay? And then, kung may WPC na mataas, no? kung walang, wala yung typical symptoms ng acute appendicitis doon, it, the, the infection can be due to 
other things. No? Nakakalito kung saan. No? Maka meron siyang urinary tract infection. Maka meron siyang uh, salpingitis. No? Ganun. Okay. So what is more reliable is yung kapa. Yung kapa sa right lower quadrant. Okay. So persistent, indefinite, and progressive. Tenderness. Then tatanggalin mo yung other possibility na the UTI, meron siyang uh, pregnancy, kung saan pregnant, yung, kung babae pregnant, masakit yung sa right lower, di ba? Okay. So make sure that the pregnancy is not Cause is not the uh, is is the cause of the pain and not acute appendicitis. No, at the last, it's hard to differentiate in the lower. No, because the mga pregnant, for example, have right lower quadrant pain, but it's not due to the acute appendicitis. No, it's due to baka related to the pregnancy, the congestion, so on. No, okay, okay. Nasagot pa nito naman, Mel. Doc, share ko lang, Doc. Kasi yung sister ko, Doc, yung na-opera ng appendicitis. So, nung kung sumakit yung tiyan niya, kung dinala namin siya sa PGH, tapos kinaka pa naman siya, Doc, ganon. Tapos meron siyang konting slight fever. Tapos parang nasusuka siya, persistent yung pain. Tapos yung laboratory na ginawa lang sa kanya, blood test. So, sig dinala namin siya doon mga 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Tapos around mga 4 a.m., wala pa rin po yung result. Tapos nung dumating yung uncle kung galing work na pumunta doon, so tinatanong kung ano na nangyari. So ang sabi nila, wala naman, normal naman daw yung blood test. Normal naman daw lahat. So nagahit kayo yung uncle ko, sabi hindi mag-aarte-arte yung pamangkin kung wala siyang nararamdamang hindi. Ano, as in masakit, persistent po talaga yung pain. So yung ginawa po namin, nilabas po namin siya doon sa emergency sa PGH. Dinala po sa Manila doctors. Tinransfer, nag-waiver na lang kami. Kasi normal daw po yung ano, yung laboratory, yung blood. Hindi naman po siya siniti scan or ultrasound or blood test lang ginawa na normal yung result. Kaya po naitanong ko kung nakikita doon. So nandun po kami sa Manila doctors. Siguro around mga 6 o'clock, 6.30 ng umaga. So tinawag po yung ano, head, hindi, hindi ko po matandaan yung name ng head ng surgeon doc nung time, mga 1990 po ata yun. So nagbabasketball pa siya sa PGH, tinawag siya, tapos pumunta siya doon sa, sa Manila Doctors. Pagkakita po niya sa kapatid ko, Sabi na niya kaagad, without, wala na pong examine yung pinapa or ganun. Sabi niya, ipasok sa operating room. So, dinaretso na po siya, hindi na nga siya sinave or what, kasi medyo mahaba na. Yun pala yung appendicitis na, Dok, nag na. Parang na-affected na rin yung lining ng stomach or something ganun. Okay. So, pumutok na siya okay. yung appendicitis. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for sharing. Ha? Ang ganda yung mga sharing para I can ano. So number one question is, hindi niya kinapa, inotera niya? Hindi niya po kinapa, nakita pa lang niya. Pero siguro na nasabi na sa kanya yung history na nanggaling kami ng PGH, tapos sumasakit ang tiyan niya, kung saan portion, yung ganun. Siguro hindi ko nakita, doc, na talagang kasama ko dun sa yung kasama yung doktor eh. Malamang baka kinapa din po niya. Yeah. Hindi ko lang talaga siya. Basta diretso lang po kasi sa operating room na kaagad in ano. So because it's a no no kung hindi niya kinapa, operahan lang niya. No? Dapat kinapa niya. Kung hindi niya kinapa, baka may kumapa ng iba para sa kanya. No? Ganun. No? Okay? So basta dapat kinakapa. Yung, hindi, mo, hindi mo masasabi may right lower quadrant pain at hindi mo kinapa. Sa so, mo, acute appendicitis, hindi ito pwede yun. No? Okay? okay? So, going back, yung sa PGH, uh, no? sabi ko sa'yo, hindi yung CBC, it's not reliable. It's like, it, ano, kung isang negative, kung isang positive, uh, uh, normal, kung isang mataas. No? Okay? So, in patients with acute appendicitis, yung CBC, WBC could be normal, could be abnormal. Okay? Okay? So, ang pinaka-reliable is yung kapa. Yung kapa. No? Okay. So, palagi ko, nung nakita nila, ang nangyari dyan, okay, okay, 
Anong nangyari sa sabi mo sa sabi ng kapatid mo at sabi ng ano? Ano siya? <coughs> Oo, Doc. Malang per- Bakit normal? Persist- ha? Bakit no- normal, Opo, Doc. Yung sa, sa result ng blood test. So, ang kulang probably dyan, baka hindi na-explain mabuti sa inyo. Ano? Okay. So, so baka sabihin nila, alay ko, hindi naman dinismiss na walang problema. Di ba? Sabihin niya, baka sinabi lang sa inyo, normal yung WBC. Di ba? No, normal yung CBC. Pero yung sakit niya, andun pa. Di ba? Masakit pa. Pero ang sabi po, Doc, wala daw silang findings na makita. Yun ang ano... Yes, sabi. Pero kung kinapa nila, may findings na masakit, di ba? Just so happened that yung laboratory niya is normal, was normal, di ba? So yung, uh, okay, there are doctors like that, kahit na pag they rely too much on the laboratory, kahit na may symptoms ng pasyente, sabihin, ay, walang problema yan, normal, baka nasa utak na lang yan, gano'n, di ba? Okay, okay. So hindi pa pwede rin yun, ha? dapat kinakapa. Na? Okay, pag kinakapa, at sina at normal yung yung WBC depende kung anong finding sa kapanya pwede ding siya sabi ko non specific di ba non specific or appendicitis di ba dalo lang yan eh di ba so non specific pwede nga kung mild lang pwede non specific pwede pang obserbahan di ba okay so pero yung sa kapatid mo may pain na talaga no masakit na masakit na anyway so So, dinala ni sa Manila doctors, meron mga six hours interval? More than, Doc. More than. So, nakita mo yung... Kasi mark- from, from 2 p.m., Doc, okay, hanggang 6 to 6.30 a.m. Okay. So, makikita mo rin yung six hours gap. No? Habang pag may acute appendicitis, let's say kung nasa PHH siya, early stage pa yun, no? hindi pa masyado masakit. So, mahirap i-diagnose, di ba? Okay? Pero pag tumatakbo yung oras, na uh, 12 hours after, nung lumipat siya sa PGH, sa Manila Doctors, baka pagpunta doon, mas masakit na, lumitaw na. Lumitaw na yung symptoms ng appendicitis. Na? Okay? Nasa- Pero Dok, nung nasa PGH pa lang siya, nakikita na namin na ano eh, talagang hindi, at, talagang yung pain talaga, matindi yung pain na nararamdaman niya. Kaya nga. Kaya nga. Parang hindi siya mahipo eh. Okay. Yan nga, sabi ko, there's, I don't know, we don't have the background. Baka may problema sa doktor na nag-examine sa kanya. Or, I'm just giving an example based on yung sa tinuturo ko ngayon na possible na baka mild lang siya. Pagpunta sa Manila doctors, 12 hours, nagpo-progress yan eh. Di ba? Pag nag-progress yan, example, example lang ito. Nung nasa Manila doctors, sabihin natin kinapako. Konting sakit lang. Na? Konting sakit lang. Nasabihin ko sa'yo, ay baka baka hindi siya appendicitis baka ano lang yan non specific na no? sabihin ko sa iyo you observe muna natin okay so pag lumipas ng 2 hours 3 hours tapain ko ulit at dum- at uh, meron na at matindi na then sasabihin ko ay acute appendicitis na yan ha so i should be ready to change my diagnosis habang kinakapa ko habang ino-observe ko Okay? That's what is meant by monitoring. In the lecture ko kanina, imamonitor mo okay? until na uh, lumabas yung mga symptoms niya. Na? Okay? 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 So, don't rely. Ito. CBC is not reliable. Ha? Okay? Pero very rampant yan. Ha? Okay? Okay. Doc, meron pa hong dalawang related questions. From Beth to Mambing. Can appendix be removed before the symptoms occurs? And then another question from Melingo. Doc, ano po ba ang role ng appendix sa katawan? Pag tinanggal ba, okay lang? Okay. Related na, no? Okay. Can you remove the appendix before symptom occurs? Ibig sabihin, normal yung appendix, tatanggalin mo. Okay. So, pwede sa pwede, no? Strictly speaking, pwede. Kung talagang kung gusto mo at uh, you have a basis kasi yung uh, strictly speaking, di, ako personally, I don't remove normal normal things, no? Normal objects, no? Okay? 
sa katawan. No? I call it unnecessary operations. No? Pero may mga instances na two, in two situations here. Yung mga seamen, no? yung mga seamen, no? from my experience, yung mga doktor na ah, tatanggalin yung appendix para hindi siya magkaroon ng appendicitis habang nagbibiyahe. Alam ba niyo yan? Alam niyo yan? May mga practice na gano'n? Yung semen, basta semen siya, okay, I, I hope it's not being done now. No? In the past, during uh, earlier years, may, may, may kilala ako mga surgeons na gano'n. No? So, sa semen sa uh, semen, dapat matanggal yung appendix mo para hindi sumakpag, para hindi kadatnan sa gita ng dagat. No? Okay. So, tatanggalin. No? So, sa akin, I don't do that. No? Okay. I only do that kung meron siyang symptoms. Okay. Now, so if you remove the appendix, parang pinipreempt mo lang, parang prophylactic, ayaw mo lang sumakit siya in the future. No? Okay. But the question is, although the issue is we don't know kung kailan sasakit. Di ba? We don't know. Okay. Parang yung mga sakit natin sa katawan natin. A lot of times, we don't know kung kailan darating yun eh. No? Okay? Number two, yung appendicitis, when I say it's common, it's not really that common. No? Okay? When you say common, I say common problem, when I say common, common, meron tayong symptoms na right lower quadrant pain. Di ba? Okay? But it does not really mean acute appendicitis. No? Okay? A lot of times, yung mga doktor, they have different mindset how they diagnose. Konting sakit lang, appendicitis na yan. Okay? Opera na natin. No? Kaya yung census sa hospital na appendectomy, duma dumadami. No? Maka Kaya sinasabi niya, very, very, uh, very common yung acute appendicitis. But in reality, if you examine me yung histopath, yung specimen, hindi talaga may appendicitis. No? Okay? Nakuha niya? Nakuha niya? Okay. So, common siya may right lower quadrant. But it's not really common to have acute appendicitis. No? But of course, as I said, we can never predict kung talagang may acute appendicitis. Anybody can be uh, hit can develop acute appendicitis without any known cause. Okay. So, may role by appendix? Sa ngayon, I don't, kasi, let's just put it the other way around. Yung mga pasyente na tinatanggal ko na, na tanggal ko ng appendix, I don't, I don't see any associated problem. Na? So, so, let's just put it, they can live a normal life without an appendix. Okay. Parang yung gallbladder then, you can live a normal life without a gallbladder. No? But it doesn't mean that you have to remove all the gallbladder. Diba? Although we know maraming may gallstones. Diba? Okay. So, kaya we discuss natin in one of my future talks about gallstones. No? To remove or not to remove. No? Okay. So, so pagtanggal, okay ba? Nahasa yun na kung gusto mo tanggal, patanggal. <laughs> okay. Pero sa akin, if you don't feel anything, na uh, bakit mo wag mo nang tanggalin kasi kung naka-focus ka sa appendix yung pala may ibang problema about your gallbladder di ba pwedeng tamaan di ba ng sakit di ba or other parts of your of your body pwedeng tamaan ng sakit na so why focus on one particular organ na okay wag mo nang i-preempt wag mo nang i-preempt in god na, na? So just wait for it na lang. Pray that uh, hindi siya ikakaproblema. Okay? Any more? No more questions? Wala na. Wala na. So there are no more questions. I still have another question. Okay. If it can be detected through CBC, can urinalysis do, like specific gravity? Pag, 
Kung hindi si busy ang gagawin, tapos urinary season ipagagawa mo, uh, pwede ba ma-detect yun sa urinary season like in uh, the specific gravity or WBC pa rin? Okay, number one, yung urinalysis is not a test for acute appendicitis, either directly or indirectly, okay? Yung CBC, pwede pa, indirect, di ba? Indirect, kasi elevated yung WBC niya, na? So that can be used for suspecting an inflammation, infection going on in the appendix, na? Okay. But yung, w, yung urinalysis is not used to uh, diagnose acute appendicitis. No? Ginagawa lang ng, ng mga urinalysis in patients with possible acute appendicitis. Parang, ini, ili, parang they're trying to eliminate lang. Baka may urinary tract infection siya causing the right lower quadrant abdominal pain. No? Okay? So, handaan ninyo ha? I, I know, rampant yan. Hindi ka hon yan. Pagpasok mo sa ER, may sakit ka. Actually, kahit, kahit na ano eh. No? Not only right lower quadrant, kahit na upper quadrant. CBC, urinalysis. Hindi ka hon yan. No? Tama. Tama. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, you do the urinalysis when you are suspecting baka may UTI. May urinary problem. No? Okay. And then you usually look at the RBC at WBC. The specific gravity is not much, walang masyadong information doon. No? So you focus on WBC, RBC. Pag, may, pag, pag mataas yung RBC mo, if it's in my blood, okay, it's either you have infection or you have stones or you have bladder, baka may tumor ka, no? causing nabibleed. No? W, WBC mataas, baka may infection. Okay? So that's how you interpret the WBC and RBC sa urinalysis. Okay? Any more? Totoo ba kung pagkabusog at tumatalon ay nagkaka-appendicitis? <laughs> okay. So, meat na yan. Meat. Meat. Okay? Meat. Okay? We don't know the exact cause. No? So, it's hard to predict. Kami sang, kadalasan wala rin kami nakikita yung buto o bato no, na nag-obstruct basta namamagalan no, yung appendix. No? Yan okay. Okay. No more. So, it's, it's 3.27. We have a nice discussion. No? Okay. I will encourage you to share your experience para ma-apply natin yung tinuturo ko. No? Okay. So with that, we'll call it a day. No? Okay. So, okay. Question is, oh, the next one will be uh, abdominal mass. I won't go into, and kapusin ko muna yung major disorder. I won't go into right upper quadrant muna. Saka natin balikan yun, na? Okay. Sa itong right lower quadrant is already more, parang example na ng, ano, more specific than the uh, right abdominal pain as a whole, na? Okay. So let's now go to abdominal mass, na? Then after that, abdominal obstruction, abdominal uh, bleeding, jaundice, and then we, pwede natin balikan yung right upper quadrant with gallbladder as an example. Huh? Okay? Okay lang sa inyo? Yep. Okay lang do. Okay. Okay. So, Bye po do. Bye po. Okay. So, Bye. April, so next Bye. one will be April 9. Huh? April 9. Okay lang ang holiday? Holiday lang April 9? Yes. Holiday, holiday April 9. Holiday April 9. Every nine holiday. 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 Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So 
Anyway, oh, sige. Sa akin, okay na. Tuloy natin. Tuloy natin para umabot lang tayo ng 50. <laughs> April 9. Okay na. Okay na. Pupunta ba kayo ng bataan? Pupunta ba kayo ng bataan? Valor's Day yan, di ba? Bataan. Bataan. Okay. So if you're not going to bataan, let's tuloy na lang natin. Ha? Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you. 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 Thank